In the music world, we've seen too many shining stars fade away too soon. But nothing hits harder than the tragic stories of artists lost to unforgiving skies. So let's look at the sorrowful tales of 10 musicians and singers who died in a plane crash. Let's begin with the iconic figure of the 1940s, Glenn Miller. In that golden era, his big band tunes captivated audiences, dominating the charts like none other, as they went on to surpass even the likes of Elvis Presley and the Beatles. But Miller's music career was short-lived when he boarded a flight to Paris in 1944 and never arrived at his destination. Alongside Lieutenant Colonel Norman Bassel and Flight Officer John Stuart Morgan, Miller boarded the Nord doing UC-64A Norseman at Milton Ernest. But what was supposed to be a routine flight swiftly descended into tragedy. On December 15, 1944, Glenn Miller and his companions set off on their journey. Things were going according to plan as the plane soared over the English Channel, but no one could foresee the tragedy that was about to unfold. Then, out of nowhere, a deafening roar shattered the silence, sending shockwaves through the aircraft. The pilots fought desperately to regain control, but their efforts were in vain. And just like that, the band leader's fate was sealed. It's believed that the plane's fuel lines froze, leading the heavy engine to sink to the channel's bed. The world mourned the loss of Glenn Miller, a musical genius whose melodies had captivated millions. But the rumors of what really happened on that fateful night are as wild as anything. So despite the best efforts of investigators, it seems like the truth will always remain submerged in the depths of the English Channel. Moving on, let's uncover the truth about the tragic demise of Buddy Holly and the day that music died. On February 3, 1959, a tragic event forever changed the course of music history. Rock and roll legends Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper, along with pilot Roger Peterson, perished in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa. They were en route to their next destination during the Winter Dance Party Tour, when Buddy Holly decided to charter a four-seater plane. Joining him was guitarist Tommy Alsup and bassist Waylon Jennings, among others. Despite facing freezing temperatures and strong winds, the group embarked on their journey, and however, the weather conditions worsened along their route, with moderate to heavy icing and precipitation in the clouds. Ignoring warnings, 21-year-old pilot Roger Peterson proceeded with the flight. Shortly after takeoff, the plane disappeared from radar and air traffic controllers lost contact. The wreckage was discovered the following day, scattered across a snowy field. The pilot was found inside the aircraft, while the musicians had been ejected. The tragic passing of these music icons left a deep mark on the industry, but their names continued to be remembered and celebrated by fans worldwide. And speaking of tragic losses, let's not forget the Leonard Skynerd band, who also met an untimely demise due to a pilot error. The plane crash claimed the lives of three members of the Southern Rock Band. On October 20, 1977, the Jacksonville-based rockers boarded a chartered plane bound for Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But tragedy struck when the twin-engine Convair CV-240 ran out of fuel near the end of the flight. With no nearby airport to land safely, the pilot attempted an emergency landing, but it ended in a fatal crash in a wooded area near Gillsburg, Mississippi. Lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and backup singer Cassie Gaines were among those who lost their lives, along with assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick and pilots Walter McCreary and William Gray Jr. Despite the devastation, some members like Alan Collins, Billy Powell, Artemis Pyle, Gary Rossington, and Leon Wilkerson survived with serious injuries. The crash shook the band to its core, changing their trajectory forever. It's a heartbreaking chapter in rock history that we'll never forget. Just like we'll never forget Otis Redding and his legacy. Regarded as one of the greatest singers in American history, Otis met a horrific end when his plane crashed as he was traveling from Cleveland, Ohio to Madison, Wisconsin. In 1967, the Dock of the Bay singer and his band boarded a private Beechcraft H-18 airplane bound for the factory nightclub in Wisconsin. Despite the heavy rain and fog, the plane took off and at first everything went according to plan. Just four miles from its destination, the pilot radioed for permission to land. But tragedy struck as the plane suddenly nosedived into Lake Monona. 
killing everyone on board except Ben Cauley from the band Bar Kays. Ben woke up just moments before the crash and managed to stay afloat on the freezing lake. But since he wasn't able to swim, he could only watch his companions' desperate struggle for survival before rescue crews arrived, too late for most. Otis Redding, along with guitarist Jimmy King, saxophonist Phelan Jones, organ player Ronnie Caldwell, drummer Carl Cunningham, and pilot Richard Fraser perished in the accident, leaving a major impact on the soul music. The cause of the crash remains unknown, leaving behind unanswered questions and haunting memories for survivors like Ben Cauley. Unfortunately, even country music has seen its fair share of losses, and none are more heart-wrenching than that of Patsy Cline. March 5, 1963, marked a tragic day for country music as Patsy, along with Hawkshaw Hawkins and Cowboy Copas, lost their lives in a plane crash while returning from a benefit concert in Kansas City, Can. Despite battling the flu, Klein performed three shows to support the family of DJ Jack Cactus Call, who had passed away earlier that year. After her final performance, she returned to her hotel, opting to fly out the next day despite poor weather conditions. Boarding a private plane piloted by her manager, Randy Hughes, Klein, Hawkins, and Copas embarked on their journey. Despite warnings of bad weather, Hughes proceeded with the flight, which tragically ended in a crash near Camden 10. The inexperienced pilot was blamed for the accident. The singer was only 30 years old at the time and left behind her husband, Charlie, and two young children, Julie and Randy. Despite her tragic passing, Klein's legacy lives on, and she was even posthumously inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1973. Just nine years after Patsy passed away, the music industry faced another massive loss. On March 19, 1982, the music world was rocked by tragedy as Randy Rhodes, the guitar virtuoso touring with Ozzy Osbourne, lost his life in a devastating plane crash in Leesburg, Florida. At just 25 years old, Randy's promising career was cut short in the blink of an eye, mere meters away from where his bandmates lay asleep on their tour bus. The tragic flight, carrying Randy, pilot Andrew Aycock, and makeup artist Rachel Youngblood, met disaster when it collided with a house. Aycock clipped the plane's wing while attempting to fly over the band's tour bus, which sent them spiraling out of control, sealing the fate of all aboard. When Osborne and the band stepped out from the bus after hearing the explosion, they immediately saw the fire and knew right away that their friend was dead. And over 40 years after Rhodes' death, Osborne still struggles with the memory of losing his friend, and metal fans forever mourn the loss of a talented musician gone too soon. But Randy wasn't the only star taken from us far too soon. Aaliyah, the princess of R&B, was just 22 when her life was cut short after a music video shoot in the Bahamas. Just weeks before her untimely death, she was enjoying time with her boyfriend, Damon Dash, on Long Island. On August 22, 2001, Aaliyah was in Miami shooting underwater scenes for her upcoming single, Rock the Boat. After completing her part early, she and her team headed to the Abaco Islands to finish the shoot. Sadly, on August 25th, while departing from Marsh Harbor, their twin-engine Cessna 402B crashed near the runway, claiming Aaliyah's life along with eight others. Investigations revealed disturbing details. The pilot, Luis Morales, was not authorized to fly the plane, and traces of cocaine and alcohol were found in his system. Plus, the aircraft was believed to be overloaded, making the situation even worse. The news of Aaliyah's passing sent shockwaves through the music industry. So when her album Aaliyah was released, it soared to number one and Rock the Boat celebrated her legacy in music. She was much more than a musician. And nobody understands that better than fans of John Denver. To fans of hits like Rocky Mountain High and Take Me Home Country Road in the 1970s, John was more than just a singer. He was a cultural icon. With his oversized glasses, bowl haircut, and down vest, Denver was dominating the music industry in the early 1970s. But his breakthrough came in 1971 when Take Me Home Country Roads soared to number two on the Billboard Pop Chart. He followed this success with an impressive 11 platinum certified albums, solidifying his status as one of the most successful artists of the decade. 
In the 1990s, Denver remained a popular touring musician, but alongside his music career, Denver pursued his passion for aviation, amassing over 2,700 hours of flight time on different aircraft. Tragically, on October 12, 1997, Denver faced a fatal accident while flying an unfamiliar aircraft over Monterey Bay. Despite ideal flying conditions, he lost control of his Long Easy aircraft while attempting to switch gas tanks, leading to the crash. That day, the world lost a musician, movie star, political activist, and one of the era's biggest stars. Unfortunately, some of the biggest names in the industry have some of the most tragic stories yet. And in Jim Croce's case, his career was soaring in 1973, with hit songs featured in films and TV shows and successful albums climbing the charts, he was on the verge of even greater success. But tragedy struck on September 20th of that year. Following a performance at Northwestern State University in Louisiana, Croce boarded a chartered Beechcraft E-18S plane bound for Sherman, Texas. Tragically, the aircraft failed to clear a pecan tree during takeoff and crashed shortly after. Croce, along with his guitarist Maury Mulison and comedian George Stevens, lost their lives in the accident. Even in the face of tragedy, Croce's music kept striking a chord with fans. His song I Got a Name, dropped just after his death, soared to the top 10 charts, cementing his place in music history for good. Finally, the last artist we're going to talk about is Jim Reeves. July 31st, 2024 will mark the 50th anniversary of the tragic passing of the popular singer-songwriter. Following a real estate deal, Reeves and his manager, Dean Manuel, departed from Batesville Regional Airport in Arkansas, bound for Nashville International Airport in Tennessee. Their aircraft was a single-engine Beechcraft debonair and was piloted by Reeves himself, who had recently obtained his private pilot's license. The 280-mile journey from Batesville to Nashville was routine until they encountered a violent thunderstorm just nine miles short of their destination while flying over Brentwood, Tennessee. Despite instructions from Nashville Air Traffic Control to turn right and avoid the storm, Reeves made a fatal error by turning left to follow Franklin Road to the airport. Heavy rain obscured his visibility, causing him to lose his ground reference. Focused on spotting Franklin Road, Reeves allowed the airspeed to drop, resulting in a stall. Instead of applying the correct procedures for recovering from a stall, Reeves applied full power and pulled back on the yoke, causing the aircraft to spin out of control and crash. Unfortunately, both Reeves and Manuel lost their lives in the accident. The crash site was discovered two days later on August 2, 1964, in a wooded area just east of Interstate 65. The tragic loss of Jim Reeves echoed throughout the world of music, as fans and artists mourned the passing of the beloved singer-songwriter. In music history, tragic plane crashes have silenced iconic voices. From Glenn Miller to Aaliyah, their melodies live on, but their stories remind us how unpredictable life can be. That wraps up our tribute to these unforgettable musicians. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.